Hello there, my name is Patrick, and you have just entered the Gameverse. And welcome back to another Top 5 Paragon Plays of the Week. If you have a sick play, send it to me by either giving me the replay ID or link to the YouTube video or Google Drive file. Send these either by PM or to my business email, patrick.planetgames at outlook.com. You may be the legends of tomorrow, or at least next week. I received this comment on last week's video. As you know, I love feedback and I'm always hoping to improve, so if you want me to change how I say it, you got it. Let's start the plays with Numero Sank. In this play, we found our Twin Blast player and his Muriel ally alone, fighting almost the entire enemy team. I think the most miraculous thing is that no one on the allied team dies. Muriel gets real close, but is able to keep her distance long enough for the enemy to be cleaned up. There's really not much for me to say. Twin Blast and Muriel had a slight 1-2 level advantage on the enemy, and were able to combine that with their skill and teamwork to end the fight with a solid 4 for none trade. Numero Cat This play is a whole team affair. Our team finds themselves in a rough spot, they're significantly underleveled, they've been losing for the majority of the match. The opposing team is starting to push down their lanes, and the inhib they took down will soon be repaired. What will they do? Our team decides to go all out, sneak around the enemy currently pushing down their towers unnoticed, and mount an all or nothing assault on the enemy core. They had to hope and pray that they could take this down before the overleveled enemy team arrived and cleaned them up. Luckily for this team, it worked oh so well. But why did it work? The enemy team had nobody back defending their wide open inhib. This is a big mistake. If only for the super minions, you should always have at least one player defending your core while your inhib repairs itself. Methinks this opposing team got a bit overconfident, and overconfidence was indeed their weakness. Numero tres. In this play, our Murdoch player defends his almost dead Richter ally while he backs. Once his friend is safe, however, he finds himself between a rock and a dead place. Phew, that was a tough situation and really could have been avoided altogether. The big question I have while watching this is why the heck did the Richter go there to back? Doesn't make much sense to me, but it gave Murdoch a great chance to show us his moves. 
He manages to dodge most of the initial attacks of the three enemies, even killing Richter, but manages to dodge just enough of the attacks to be able to clean up the enemies with the help of his friendly Twin Blast. I've mentioned this before, but I love how much aiming and dodging comes into play in Paragon, even just for auto attacks. You can be one shot from death, and if you dodge just the right way, you can still survive and make a major impact on a team fight. Numero duh. Our Sparrow player starts by pushing down the right lane and taking out the tower, then decides to go take a camp. On her way, a friendly Richter runs by her. Little does she know what Richter was running from. A massive 4 on 1 gank becomes a quadra for the ganky. Another show of the fact that if you're under leveled significantly like the team here, even a 4 on 1 or 4 on 2 can turn out very very badly for you. A couple minutes after this, the enemy team conceded the game. Numero! Uh. <laughs> I believe this is our first grim play of the week, and it's number 1! Strong first showing I'd say. Play. What's really impressive is that this Grim is actually a lower level at the beginning and then equal after the first kill. So Grim sees his friends being attacked and seeks to help out. You may be thinking, well Patrick, he doesn't save them. They both die, so he kind of failed hard, didn't he? Well, that's where you're wrong. Not only is it just plain awesome and fun to watch one guy take out four all by himself on even footing, but he turns what was essentially an easy 2 for 0 for the enemy team into a crushing 2 for 4 for the enemy team. Get two kills for free, or pay with pretty much your whole team. Yeah, I'd say there's a big difference there, and this Grim player made that difference all by himself. An incredible play, and our number one play of the week. And that's it for week number eight. As always, I thank everyone who sent me their plays, because without you, there can be no top 5. If you're wondering how to submit your play, simply upload it to YouTube or Google Drive and send me the link, or give me the replay ID. You can do this via either PM or email at patrick.planetgames at outlook.com. It's in the description if you're confused as to the spelling. You might just be one of the legends of next week. What did you think of this week's top 5? Would you have placed them differently in the rankings? Let me know down in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Saturday, we had our inaugural weekly Paragon stream and it was a blast. Got to play with you guys and I'm super excited for the coming weeks. Unfortunately, I can't do it this Saturday as I'm gonna be away. So I'm gonna be having it either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'll let you guys know. Follow me on Twitter and uh, that's probably where I'll be letting you know. Other than that, just watch for the video that I'll be posting up here when I'm streaming and hopefully you'll be able to make it. Also, next week's Plays of the Week will most likely not be uploaded till Monday or Tuesday due to the same reason. For those of you who couldn't make Saturday stream or can't make any in the future, I'm going to be uploading a stream highlight video every week. An exact day is going to be set later on. Thanks for watching and I hope to see all you legends out in Agora. Goodbye. <laughs>